lot of fun. We spent considerable time combing through our film archive to find footage when cast and crew made their way to Johnstown. Nancy Dow, the sister of former Jet Ned Dow, wrote the screenplay and incorporated many of her brother's stories into the script. When art director Henry Bumstead surveyed the city as a possible site for the movie, he loved the hills, Central Park, and small town feel, and convinced director George Roy Hill to film here. The rest, as they say, is history. Hill took advantage of many such locations in the movie, whether a local bar or restaurant, or, of course, scenes shot inside the War Memorial, where hundreds of extras took part. Paul Newman and Hill had worked together often, and Newman would take on the role of aging player coach Reg Dunlop to lead a bunch of misfits to an unlikely Federal League title in a town struggling through tough times. Even Newman knew during the filming in 1976 that this movie was different than others in which it starred. This is the rockiest film I've ever done. Uh, the language is uh, quite a bit beyond blue. Treat me right now! <laughs> it's heavy into purple almost. And, uh, but I think the character is original. The, the culture is original. Uh, and uh, the people are simply fascinating to play. NBC broadcaster Bob Costas had the chance to see some of those fascinating people firsthand as a young play-by-play -play man for the Syracuse Blazers during the 1973-74 season while he was still in college. I loved the movie, uh, and I recognized many of the characters. Ogie Oglethorpe is Bill Harpo Goldthorpe, who played for the Syracuse Blazers. In fact, it was Ned Dowd who portrayed Ogie Oglethorpe in the movie. The way he's portrayed, pretty accurate. And Bill Goldthorpe wasn't the only character based on actual players. Of course, there were the Hanson brothers based on the Carlson brothers, Jack, Jeff, and Steve, the bespectacled trio who played for the Jets in the mid-70s. When Jack was called up and couldn't take part in the movie, another Jet, Dave Hanson, filled the role as one of the brothers. Well, here we are almost... 40 years down the road, and the Hanson brothers have made a career out of it. The Hanson brothers still get booked regularly for hockey appearances. They've, they've lived off that for a long, long time. Uh, and I say that with appreciation. You know, it, it connected with people. And in the movie, the Hanson brothers are usually found in the middle of a brawl somewhere. Not exactly out of character for mid-1970s minor league hockey. Absolutely. In the one year that I did games in the Eastern Hockey League, not only were there multiple fights in almost every game, but these were wild, almost cartoonish, bench-clearing brawls in which the trainers would square off. I don't believe a thing is truly, truly vulgar if it's really funny. And there's a lot of uh, uh, profane language in the picture, but it is funny. It is a funny, funny... A character in funny situations. Uh, so I, uh, I don't know, and I think it'll be tastefully vulgar. Not so sure about the tastefully vulgar, but 40 years later, fans still find the movie funny. Tim Rigby, Six News, Johnstown.